the thing that moves God about you is how you display your mind. That is where your glory is. The glory of this creation that God has put together like this is in your mind. So, God is not looking at your outward, you know, the shining look on your face. He's looking at when situations happen. That is when he's looking at you. He wants to see how you are going to manufacture thoughts. How you're going to put informations together and produce a result. That's what he's waiting for. So, he's watching. And then suddenly he just say, who are we? If we die, we die. All the angels just say, Kai. <laughs> so, he looked at Abraham. And Abraham told Isaac, Isaac, tomorrow morning we're going somewhere. Okay, Dad. Where are you people going to? Don't worry. Oh, we'll come back. We'll tell you. Let's go. Carry the servant. They were going. Lord, you said you'll show me the mountain. Where is the mountain? And, and God was watching. And he said, that one. Okay. So, got to the foot of the mountain. He said, hey. You guys, stay here. Myself and the lad, we will go up to offer the sacrifice and we will come back. Because did you just say, we will come back? Oh, you don't understand. Give me Hebrews 11, verse 17. Hebrews 11, 17. Look at this. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, what's the next word? Offered up Isaac. Notice, they offered up Isaac. Did he say killed Isaac? He said offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Those words were selected. He who had what? Received the promises. What's the promise? I'll make you a father of many. If you want to be a father, then you have to have some. So he now says, He who had received the promises offered his only begotten son. Next verse. Next. Of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be. Are you getting the construction now? Next. Concluding. Did you see that? Before he offered him, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. So when he was telling those servants, I and the lad will go and offer this and we will come back, it was not a slip of tongue. It is something Abraham had meditated on. So how is this thing going to end? How is this matter going to end? Because God said I should offer him as a sacrifice. Will I disobey God? I don't think I can disobey God. I will do everything God says. But then, God has said in Isaac shall my seed be. Oh, 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 I see. This God who is telling me to offer this boy, he has the power to raise the dead. Oh, I know what he's planning. I know now it's not zeal. Abraham was not saying, God, I have only one son. I want to sow him as a seed so that he give him any son. No, it was a command from God that he was following. I get what I'm saying. But while he was following that command, his brain was working. He wasn't following foolishly. His brain was working. So he said, so the only option I see here is that if I kill this boy, then God is going to raise him up. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh-huh, that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to normal people. But it makes sense to people of faith. That's what he says here. He says he actually what received him in a figure. That's why he told the servant, we will come back. And Sarah is expecting us back at home. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what moved God in Abraham's case is not because Abraham was willing to kill Isaac. It was because Abraham, even to that point of killing Isaac, still believed that in Isaac, his seed will be. I 
don't know, don't know if you get what I'm saying. That is what faith is. So that's the same thing that moved God where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are concerned. But God, watch these guys. They said, King, if it is a furnace, not a problem because our God, and God checked their heart. These guys don't mean, <laughs> I mean, they are going to go and they believe I will deliver them. See, it was a settled thing in their minds. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was a settled thing in their mind. Throw us there, our God will deliver. That's not a problem. We don't have a problem with that. It's God. We don't have a problem with, with, with that furnace. Of course, you know the story. Did God deliver them? Of course, he did. Now, when God delivered them, what happened? Their promotion became sure. You see, that challenge came because of their promotion. If they had not been promoted, this challenge wouldn't have come.